Hello, I'm Maxwell George and I'm so excited today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, are you ready? Let's call in our daily bread today. Now, you should be expecting. It's a new year and you should be expecting a miracle every day. You know why? Because God is your father and he loves you. If he loves you, then you should see the demonstration of his love in your life. Praise God. So are you ready to join me in faith? Say, Father, today I make a demand for my daily bread right now and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. As simple as that, guess what you're doing? You are acknowledging the Lord as your shepherd. You are acknowledging, acknowledging the Lord as the one who provides for you. This is how it works. Acknowledgement. Praise God. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And then what does he do? He directs your paths. So listen, this is how I know you're going to receive a miracle today. Why? Because he's going to direct your path to where he has made provision for you. Praise God. Father, we honor you today for this broadcast. And I pray for everyone watching and listening right now. I declare, Lord, every burden is lifted from their hearts. Every yoke is destroyed over their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. We see your word transforming our lives today. Even as your spirit guides us into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Man, praise God. Now we are still talking about how to walk in 2022. Still, I've been talking to you about what the light that is in you, how you see, how you see, how you hear, how you interpret things. It's not about what has happened in your life or it's not even about what is going to happen today, what is going to happen tomorrow. It has nothing to do with what anyone does to you. But guess what? It has everything to do with how you see what people have done to you. Now, whether good or bad, you can turn it to your own advantage. And that's the truth. Turn it to your own advantage. That one, it's within your power. That's why Jesus said, make sure that the light that is in you is not darkness. We, we're dealing with a father who can cause all things to work together for your good. Now, if you believe that as truth, then why would you ever think you're disadvantaged? If you believe that your father, who is God, who created the heavens and the earth, if you believe he can cause all things, everything to work together for your good, then you should know that everything that comes your way, they are all ingredients. And what is God going to do with those ingredients? Cause them, use every one of them to work for your good. Now, why would you ever think then that you are disadvantaged? Why would you ever blame where you are now on what somebody did to you? Maybe someone was supposed to give you an opportunity, but they didn't. Maybe someone lied against you and you lost your job. Maybe somebody lied against you and you lost even an inheritance. Let me tell you this. There is nothing that happens in your life that God was not aware of. There is nothing that happens in your life that will take God by surprise. Nothing. Now, I'm saying all these things to give you the right mindset to live in. Because when you approach God, you've got to approach him with a heart of believing. And number two, the, the what do you believe? So I believe God. Then what do you believe? Now, I'm approaching God with a situation. And in my heart, I believe that this God I'm approaching, he can make all things work together for my good. Now, when I believe that, 
and then approach God, it will be silly for me to go before him and say, God, Lord, can you imagine what they did to me? These people are so wicked. They are so wicked, oh God. See what they did to me. Oh, if they have not done this thing, I know what I would have gained. Oh Lord, see what they did to me. Now, that's the wrong way to approach such a God, such one who can turn things for your good. You go before him and say, Lord, this is, this is what has been done so far. And this is the situation where we found ourselves. Now, Lord, can you tell us what you want us to do? Can you tell me what you want me to do right now? Can you give me your wisdom? The best prayer, I always say this, you know, people hear me say this, you know, I, the best, my best scripture, my best scripture in the Bible is James 1.5. And guess what he said? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. I mean, I mean, <laughs> no, think about it. I've got that open letter. And if you read that from the, the, the Living Bible, you say, if you want to know what to do, ask. So, <laughs> all I need to do is to find out what I need to do now. Knowing that God is not going to look at me and say, ah, son, I wish you had brought this matter yesterday. You would have been able to do some, but right now, it's too late. Ah, it's too late. And they say, ah, God. No, 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 no. You approach him and say, okay, Lord, this is the situation now. What would you have me do? And he's the one that will tell you. Either he will tell you, stand still, and you will see my glory. Now, when he says stand still, you better stand still in your mind also. Praise God. And if he tells you, oh, Take up this and go do this and go, go talk to this person or go see this person. The moment he says that, then watch out how when you have obeyed him, things begin to turn around for your good. That is the God we are. We talk about that is the God we serve. That is the one we call our father. He's never, can you imagine Jesus, you know, getting to that seashore and, and everybody's gone. No boats there. What would he do? You see, but then it's the Lord that will tell him, you know what? You can walk on this water. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, think about it. And then he, he wanted to feed that crowd. But they didn't have enough food. Yeah, what do you have? They said, just five loaves and two fishes. I would have said, hmm, that's too bad. Well, there's nothing we can do. So let's leave it. No. You see, we need to build our faith to that point where we don't give up so easily. This is 2022. You can't live the way you were living in 2021. You can't reason the way you reasoned in 2021. If not, then expect the same kind of results. But you can, even though you had good results last year, you can increase the kind of results you get this year. How? By increasing your level of reasoning. Oh, if last year was good for you, fine and good. This year surely should be better. But you see, if you follow the same pattern of reasoning like you did last year, then your results will almost be the same. But if you up your game, how? If you, if, if you tell yourself, hey, I, no, you know, there's something I've always said. Watch your life. Anything God have done in your life twice, He's showing you His pattern with you. So now you, you see the disciples of Jesus, you know, and then Jesus fed the 5,000. They were excited. And then Jesus fed the 4,000 and they were excited. And in the next chapter in the book of Matthew, I think that's Matthew 15 or Matthew 16, Jesus was talking to them and He says, Beware of the level of the Pharisee and the Sadducees. And then they began to reason among themselves, oh, we didn't carry bread. And Jesus rebuked them and said, what's wrong with you guys? And then he reminded them of those two miracles. So what was Jesus expecting? When he, when he thought, thought crossed their mind that, oh, 
we didn't carry bread. Someone should have said, no, it can't be. If we need bread, Jesus will do, give us bread. You remember the last two situations we needed bread? He supplied the bread without rebuking anybody. So I don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. Now, what does that, when you, when you reason that way, what have you done? You have increased your level of reasoning with God. Now, that is how God increases our IQ. See, there is no one who walks with God. I say this all the time. There is no one who walks with God that can be dull. It's impossible. Because the one you are walking with, the one you are talking to, is the most intelligent I don't know how to qualify him in this hierarchy. He, he's, he's, he is intelligent. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. So how can you walk? You know, simple um, um, principle. The Bible says, if you walk with the wise, you'll be wise. Right? So if you walk with God, think about it. If you can walk with God, and you know that is the truth, you must be a God to be able to walk with God. <laughs> And that's why even Jesus said to those Jews, said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. And Jesus said, if he called them gods, this is in, in, in John chapter 10, and I think from verse 30, he said, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. Now, I remember seeing that scripture and it hit me so deep in my spirit. Say what? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. So, the word of God doesn't go to normal human beings. Now, what do I mean by that? Do I might say normal human beings should not go to church? No, I'm talking about the word of God coming to you. I'm not talking about a preacher preaching to you. I'm talking about the word of God. See, you need to understand that. The word of God coming to you. He says, if the word of God comes to you, then he, he calls you a God. He calls you a God. So if you are that one that can, you know, we, we can quote those scriptures. He said, I said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. Hey, praise God. God said we are gods. No, Jesus defines that statement that he wasn't talking to everybody. It's not everybody God have declared to be a God. Jesus defined that statement by saying, he, he was defining Psalm 82. And he said, if he called them God, because Jesus said, is it not written in your law? So he was quoting what is written in their law. Now, where, is it, where was he quoting? He was quoting Psalm 82. And then he now said, the people he was referring to as gods are the people who the word of God came to. Now, when he says the word of God coming to you, he's talking about the voice of God coming to you. Now, sometimes you feel it in your spirit. Sometimes you hear an audible voice. Sometimes you, you know, you just know that God has spoken to you. If you are that time, then you are a God. <laughs> now, do you know what that means? It means you, God expects you to reason with him on the same frequency. Now, he would not expect that if he has not put the ability in you. So you, you find Jesus talking to the disciples sometimes and say, Oh, 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 you without faith. Or he say, How is it that you don't understand? Why? Because I expect you to flow with me on the same frequency. So when I say something, I expect you to put on your thinking cap and get exactly what I'm talking about. Praise God. Now that's the truth. So this is how God sees you. But how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as just, a, <laughs> we're just there waiting for the day God will help us? Listen to me. 2022, you cannot live a beggarly life. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you cannot live a beggarly life. This is one year you will take charge of your life and order it the way God has commanded it to go and it will obey you. This is the year that you will speak to situations and believe in your heart that those things which you have said will come to pass. And guess what? You will have what you say. This is the year for that. I told you last week, this is one year you cannot blame the devil for anything. Oh, no, 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 no. Even the devil will say, me? I'm not involved. Praise God. Yeah. 
Because cause, cause the Spirit of God is taking full charge of our lives this year and producing every thought of his heart for your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Our time is up for today, but I'll see you again tomorrow. Listen to me. Believe in your heart that God loves you. And you will see that love demonstrated. Bye-bye.